Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we're going to get kind of crazy. It's going to get pretty complicated. Before we get into it, I wanted to just mention a couple of things. The first is that, number one, you might notice that I kind of just did some formatting on these filters and stuff. If you wanted to, I'm just going to do this re really quickly. Um, you could always have filters on the side of your page. Um, like, so if you have, let's say, this this big column right here, and you don't, you could move all of this stuff. Now, let's just make two columns just to be, because I just want to show you how to do this in case it's something that you want to do. You can always move stuff, and I'm just going to do an example with, with, with this date range. And you could select these columns, group them, and hide them. So if you don't want any of your filters on your dashboard, you can just place them here, but then you'll just have to open and close this whenever you want to change things. So if we wanted to say 11, 5, 2019, we'd have to do that and then close it to print. And, and that's fine. Just two, two different strategies. You can move all your filters, like maybe the, um, the compare to is over. Oop, I shouldn't have done that because it's merged, but I mean, sorry, I just I just need to need to do this so, so that you know, right? So now, all right, we're selecting position average here, and we can close it. Same thing. I'm going to undo everything that I just did because I'm going to keep them on the page so that I don't have to keep on opening and closing this thing. But if you are printing reports, that might be a consideration. Okay, now let's get into it. We're just going to go straight into it. So in the last video, we figured out how to make this kind of sortable, um, but what we aren't able to do is we aren't able to sort by each of these. What if we just wanted to see their body weight from, from highest to lowest? Um, we could really make this thing super dynamic. What if we wanted to sort by participation status? There are two different ways to do this. One is dynamic, one is not so much. And there are a couple of things that I need to bring up before we even get into this. The first is that with this filter function where we choose what well, right now we're saying we want to display the dates and the season phase this is for each column okay so we're saying we want to display um, the dates in the first column and the season phase in the second column however with our format we have these columns merged or i do at least so if i were to add another metric let's say i were to add another i'm going to add season phase again comma season phase again so that now we're displaying three metrics, and I click enter. We won't see season phase come up again. That's because it is emerged with, it is hidden within this merge. So if we unmerge these cells, let me just unmerge each of these and copy the formatting, paste it down. Now we see that we have a third column, but we only know that because we unmerge these cells. So that's a long way of me saying that we are going to add season phase in here twice because these cells are merged. If they are not merged, then you'll only need it in once. So for any columns that you've merged together, you're going to need something to take up space if you want to add in something after it. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So let's say that we wanted to add participation status to this list that we could potentially sort from. Well, what we could do is we could do a comma and add participation status uh, from our testing database. So we can go to our testing database and select participation status. Now we have one, two, three, four columns that we're bringing back. And we can click enter. Now we get an error. That's because this is trying to add a column, but there's already data in here. It's saying, hey, like what's going on? I'm blocked. So if we remove the data that we have, which I just did, I just clicked remove. Now, participation status shows up again and everything works again. Now what we could do, if we want to sort by participation status, is we could go to our formula, and instead of matching this to the, uh, matching what we pick to these two, date and season phase, we could just extend this range to go to D57 instead of C57, to also incorporate participation status and click enter then 
in our data validation, we won't have it in our dropdown. So what we'll have to do is go to our data validation list, go to data validation, and just extend our range again to D6, D57 instead of C57. If we click save, now we can select participation and we'll get it sorted by that. So you could do that for every single one of these metrics. The problem is, if we were to do that, let's say we do it with body weight. I'm going to remove these, and I'm going to select another column that we want to bring back, comma, go to our testing data, and let's just select our body weight column, wherever that is, and click Enter. Now we have the body weights here again, and let me just quickly incorporate that into our dropdown. Right, I'll go to data, data validation, we'll make this E57 to include um, this, this body weight metric, and we will also change this match formula to go to E57 as well so that we incorporate it in this sorting. And click enter. Now we should be able to pick body weight, and if we pick it, we can sort by top to bottom. Now the problem with doing it this way is that now this is no longer dynamic. Right, so now we're like, what the heck? What is going on here? So, well, one thing that if you do change a metric, you'll have to change it in, in the list. But notice that we changed CMJ, this to CMJ average, but these are still body weights. So if we go back to body weight here, we will need to make this formula more dynamic than just selecting the body weight column, unless you know what you want. So if you know what you want in each of these columns, then that's fine, right? You can just pick, okay, I want the dates, then the season phase, then the body weights, or then the participation, then the body weights, then the CMJ average, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, and you can list them all off. However, then you won't be able to pick from a dropdown and change metrics on the fly. So to do this, while, while being able to still change metrics on the fly, we need to use index and match. We've done this a bunch of times with average ifs already, but we haven't done it, I don't believe, in this formula. It works the same way, and I don't want to get too much into it because it's going to get too confusing, but essentially, instead of having body weight here, right, this is the body weight column, what we can do is, let me just copy it from this formula. We can copy this index match stuff that we have, in each of these formulas that we did. I'll go over it once and then it'll be a copy and paste. I'll copy this and then in this formula, which is already overwhelming, let me try to segregate it with, um, with some stuff so that it's easier to read. Here are all of our columns that we want to bring back. This is the body weight one. If we replace the body weight one with this index match thing, we just need to change a little thing. So we need to change F57 to E57, and then I'll explain what's going on. So right now we want to bring back the date, the season phase, the season phase again because the cells are merged, and we don't want to, to then go to participation status and have participation status be hidden in the merge. So we need to fill that merge with another thing. Then we want participation status, which is hard-coded, and then we want to look inside our testing data and find whatever metric we pick here and get the data for that. So right now that's body weight. And if we click enter, we don't see any change. But now if we change this metric to something else, like uh, let's say uh, VO, uh, TBDL load, and then we'll have to change change the sort to something. Now we have the trap bar deadlift loads here. And if we change it to, I don't know, a uh, broad jump, now we have the broad jumps here. So now we have a sortable table, and we could decide to sort it now by broad jump if we wanted to. Now we have a table where, where it's dynamic and that we can choose what we want to sort by. For one metric. Now we need to add this for all of the metrics. So we have this index uh, match for one metric which matches E57 to the to the testing headers. Now we need to add it for all of the other all of the other metrics. So what I'm actually going to do here because I think it'll help with uh, legibility at least for this 
is I'm going to separate each one of these index and matches for you so that we can see each one individually. So that's one comma. Now we're looking to add another column to this range of stuff that we want to bring back. So let's do, I'm going to click Alt Enter to separate lines. And I'm going to copy this index match thing and paste it beneath. But now instead of matching E57 to our database headers, we want to match F57 because that's the next column that we want to bring back, this one right here, or that we want data in. And then we can do a comma and Alt Enter and Paste. And now instead of F57, we want G and so on and so forth so that we make each of these columns where we can pick a metric dynamic so that we can pick that metric and then it's looking for the data um, for that metric and we can sort by it by having it as part of the sort function instead of part of our average ifs function that we used earlier that coincides with the dates and the athlete that we pick. Sorry, that was long-winded. So we do a comma, alt, enter, and we can paste again, F, G, H. I'm just going to keep on going until I get to M so that we have all of our metrics in here. Comma, paste, H, I, comma, paste, or comma, alt, enter, paste, I, J, comma, alt, enter, paste, J, K, and comma, alt, enter, paste, K, L, and comma, alt, enter, paste, L, M. So now we have all of our metrics available for this whole thing to work. And we can click enter. And we get an error because we have data or we have formulas blocking its path. So if we select, I'm just going to select all the data in this entire table. So now we actually have no formulas in this entire table except for this one cell in cell A58. And when I click the backspace here, which I just did, I removed all the data. Now there are no formulas. These are numbers showing up all from this one formula. And we can pick any metrics that we want and sort by them. So we might turn this back. Let's go back to body weight. Um, the, the last thing that we have to do is make another minor adjustment to this formula um, so that we include all of these like we did um, at the beginning or tr a couple minutes ago by adding in the body weight. There are two steps. The first is we need to change our match at the end of this function, which I know now is super overwhelming. And like I said, it was going to get complicated. So this match function here is looking for whatever we pick in our dropdown between a... 57 and E57. We need to expand this out to M so that we include all of our metrics as potential sorting options and click enter. Now the next thing that we have to do is go to our data validation and include all these metrics in our dropdown. So we click on our dropdown here for our sort by. We can go to data, data validation, and just change this instead of A57 to E57, we'll go A57 to M57 all the way over to bench relative strength and click save. Now we should be able to sort by any of these metrics. So we can say, okay, what a, let's sort by 20 meter sprint. And maybe let, let's, let's flip that around or whatever the case might be. We could, again, now we can change this too, right? Right now it's 20 meter sprint. Maybe now, all right, let's make this strength score and let's sort by the strength score now, which should be in our dropdown. Okay, and let's flip that around. I want to see their highest first. Okay, so that's how that's how this works. I'm going to bring this back to 20 meter sprint, and I'm just going to sort it by date. But this makes the table super dynamic, and hopefully it allows you to do almost anything that you want with all of the fitness testing data that you have on this athlete. In the next video, I'm just going to go over some minor conditional formatting, maybe to add certain colors to this, because uh, I haven't covered conditional formatting yet, I don't believe. And that's a whole new world, um, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But that's all I have for this video. I know it was complicated. If you need to rewatch, you know, go through very slowly and try to understand what's, what's going on. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I know it's tough stuff. And one thing about me, so what is the coolest sporting event that you've ever gone to for me 
I was very fortunate. I was young. Uh, I went to a New England Patriots game that was called the Snow Bowl, or the Tuck Rule game. I was very young at the time. It was freezing, lots of snow. It was in 2002, so I was like 12 years old. And my uncle brought me to the game. Tom Brady, the quarterback of the Patriots, he got hit. Um, he, he was going to throw it, and then he tucked it into his body and got hit and fumbled it. But because the refs decided that it was an incomplete pass and not a fumble, the Patriots uh, maintained possession and ended up kicking a field goal to win the game when they would have lost if, if that was actually ruled a fumble. So that was a really cool thing to go to. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts uh, in the States. So that was a very memorable moment in uh, New England's history and the history for Boston sports. And yeah, that was my coolest event, even though I was begging my uncle to go home uh, the entire second half because I was cold. And yeah, leave a comment below with the coolest sporting event that you've gone to. And if you haven't gone to any, just leave your favorite teams. I'd love to check them out. And if this video was helpful, uh, please make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already and you've been rolling through this and getting a lot of value, please subscribe so that the YouTube algorithms know that um, at least I'm doing something pretty good for, for the channel. And yeah, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.